Okay, so let's go through the um, the uh, elastic block storage, right, and and the uh, instant storage options. Uh, first of all, elastic block storage. This is basically disk drives that get plugged into the instances. Uh, you can think of them like when you have a server back in your data center, and you you know you want to add more storage to it. You basically get a disk drive, and you add another disk drive into one of the slots. And that's the way you can think of these things. Basically, you can say how large you want them to be. Like I say, I want a 50 gigabyte volume. You create that volume, and then you attach it. Uh, to your EC2 instance, just like you are going to, um, you know, add a disk drive to a server. Um, and you could have multiple of these, like so they can have one for your boot volume, then secondary volumes as well. Uh, they can range from one gigabyte to 16 terabytes. Again, you get to say how large you want them to be, and you do pay for them according to the size that you provision, not for how much data that you store. Right, so if it's a 50 gigabyte volume and you only put five gigabytes in it, you still have to pay for 50 gigabytes. Uh, elastic block stores are designed for 99.999% availability, which is very high. And the reason why that's so high is because they actually have two devices in the data center that mirrors your data internally. So even though you attach one volume to your instance, in, inside of the data center is actually two copies of your data. So in case they have some type of hardware failure, uh, you don't lose your data, and the server, the drive actually stays up and running. Um, they have options for full volume encryption, so the whole, every every file on the uh, volume could be encrypted if you you choose that option when you when you create the EBS volume, and then everything will be encrypted. Now any data that gets written to it will get encrypted. Anything that gets read from it will be decrypted on the fly. Um, the EBS volumes are separate from the instances. They are actually not physically plugged into the host machine. So even though you, it, it appears to us like a disk drive is mounted locally uh, to their, our instance, it's actually not. There's a network connection that goes between the EC2 instances host machine and the host machine for the EBS volumes. Um, and so, even if you have a failure on your EC2 instance, or even if the host machine has a failure, the, you don't lose the data on the EBS volume. Okay, that's set, that's saved separately. So we recommend EBS volumes for anything that you need to durably store on a file system basis, right? So a file system that you can attach to your instance that you need durable storage, that's what EBS is for. Now talk about durability, it has another factor to increase durability, and that is snapshots. So anytime you want, you can have an EBS snapshot taken, and this is a snapshot of all of the files that are on the volume, and that snapshot is saved as an object in S3 with 11.9 storability. Now, anytime you need to, you could create an EBS volume from a snapshot. So let's say that I, you get some corruption on your data, on your EBS volume, or somebody deleted some important files. Well, if you've got a snapshot, all you need to do is create a new EBS volume from the snapshot and replace the old EBS volume uh, with the new one. Okay, so it's very easy to recover data to a new volume. It also has a capability of copying those snapshots across regions. Again, not automatically, but when you want to, you can have EBS snapshots copied to another region. And again, that's good for disaster recovery purposes. So if there's some type of major disaster that impacts the whole region, if you've got your EBS snapshots in a secondary region, you can restore everything over there. Okay, we had a little question come in. I might as well answer it at this point. Can we privately share AMI within a group of AWS users? We think yes, it's up. Okay, so when you create a custom AMI, right, which I'm going to do later, you can, det you can determine which IAM users can access it. Okay, so custom AMIs give you that capability. Okay, the ones that you use provided by Amazon have full everyone permissions. That's why you can use them. But you can share AMIs that you create just with your own private users. Um, if we are taking Linux OS, how come this HVM works? Okay, HVM doesn't really have anything to do with the operating system. It has to do with the virtualization uh, libraries that are used. So uh, HVM is, there used to be 
two that were used commonly, paravirtual and HVM. And in the very beginning, back in 2006, paravirtual drivers were faster than HVM drivers. So everything that, that you did on your instances seemed to run fat uh, faster with paravirtual. So everybody used paravirtual. However, what happened was HVM drivers started, they started using paravirtual drivers on HVM, and then HVM became the better solution because it's more, like I said, more of a bare metal architecture. So it's better for compatibility with things. So we, are, we recommend that you use HVM. Okay, let's move on. 